I've made a few of these heel toe videos. Uh, this one I'm using my axis pedals. Uh, between these and the demon drives, I find it is a lot easier to do on these. The leverage is more forward, and I can just get a way stronger hit out of them. Uh, the demon drives worked really well. I found they were smooth, but with these, I could almost get away with not triggering a lot of the time. They just hit so much harder, which makes the uh, triggering way more accurate. So to start off my bass drum head, it's quite tight. Um, my pedals, the spring tension is actually relatively loose. I'm probably maybe halfway. I find uh, with the tight head, I get a good rebound, so I don't need the uh, tight springs. If my bass drum skin was looser, I would have t uh, tighter springs to compensate for that. And because I'm triggering, I also have uh, quite a bit of uh, just blankets or whatever to stuff the bass drum so I don't get double triggers. The only other settings that really uh, make a big difference on the axis pedal is my VDL setting. I have that all the way forward. Uh, and it just keeps the pedal wanting to move forward so I get a good rebound. Uh, and the beater height, I find, makes a big difference, too. If you're, if you're too high or too low, it'll get more of a gallop to it. So I've been adjusting that up and down just a little bit to get it uh, to be a fairly smooth hit. I'm also using some wood beaters just to add a bit of weight for it. Now that we have the settings figured out, let's work on the technique. The first thing you're going to want to do is just take your foot and hit it flat on the floor. Just lift it straight up and down, all from the hip flexor. If you do that same technique and just hit with your heel, and that's basically most of the technique right there. You're, you're going to do the same thing here. You're going to hit with your heel, and then after the first hit, your foot rocks forward a bit. And this is at a slower motion. Once you get going faster, it actually just feels like you're hitting flat again. But when you're going slow, like it's, it's almost impossible to do at this speed. I never play this low. But heel toe. You see my heel is hitting about two inches behind the pedal. The middle of my foot hits the back of the footboard here. So now that's over exaggerated. When I'm actually playing this, it looks like that. So this technique, I'm not actually forcing each hit. It just comes naturally. After you make the first hit, the pedal flips up, and then you push down with your toe. So I'm hitting it flat, and then on the rebound, I'm just kind of moving my foot forward a little bit, like this. I'm not, uh, you know, burning up my muscles. I'm not really stomping down with my toe. It's not a lot of work. So if you're doing both feet... So as you can see, it's a, it's a really, really simple to do once you get it. A couple tips I'd recommend is learning on one foot and then the other. So just work on single foot. And once you get that, go to the other one. So basically your foot is flat with the pedal at all times. If you're too high up, you're going to get a single stroke because you're not going to be able to catch a rebound. You're just going to hit it. And same with if you're too far back this way, you're not even going to get a stroke. You'll also find you kind of want to be in the sweet spot here. If I'm too far up to pedal, I'm either going to be hitting my heel on this back plate, which is no good, or I'm going to be just my toes on here. It's hard to get a lot of pressure. Uh, you'll see I don't play with my heels on the pedal. I don't like having my feet way up here. And I, I can kind of play like this, but it's not nearly as fast and it sounds gallopy. Yeah, that, that is not the technique. If I go back here, watch how much more comfortable this is. It's it's ridiculous how easy it is to back there. Um, oh, the other thing I was going to say is, you know, if you have big feet and you're saying, oh, I have size 15 feet, I can't do this. I can start back here, and I can slide my feet up to about here, and it'll work. There is a sweet spot in the middle, but let's try from further back to f further forward. So you'll see on my pedal here, I actually pulled it back a few inches. Um, the extra tension I find on the rod by doing that makes the left pedal feel a lot more like the right. Uh, everything from, from that to beater height, uh, how high the beaters are in the pedal, uh, the VDL, the spring tension, the bass drum head tension, the distance from the head, every single one of these, even the footboard angle make a difference. 
And when it's not right, you'll know because it won't sound uh, very well. It can start sounding gallopy or sometimes it won't even work at all. One thing I did was I, I tried with my pedal height as high as it would go and low as it would go. And I found the easiest spot here. You'll see when I push down on that, my pedal is almost flat. It's almost bottomed out. There's about enough to get a finger under there. But I found that was the easiest setting just because you don't really want to be lifting your heels up like this while you play either. That's not very comfortable. So this is the flattest I can have it while still playing it properly. So all you guys out there saying, can I do this on my pedals? I get this asked pretty much daily. Um, it is easier for sure with longboard pedals and with the direct drive. If you have a chain drive pedal and it's a short board, it's going to be a lot harder to do this. Uh, I tried a couple times and I haven't tried on a double, just on a single playing around. And it was, it was tough. On a short board, I can do slide a little easier maybe. And same with the chain. And when I play on my punk band, I prefer chain drive. But when I'm doing, you know, this fast death metal stuff, the direct drive is just, it's so responsive. And especially for doing these doubles, you need that. As soon as it hits, it's starting to bounce back. With the chain, you get the, the pedal kind of jumps up a little bit and it just doesn't work very well. Right now I have two sets of longboard pedals. Um, the other ones are good. They, they're, you know, they're very smooth. They're very responsive. But I just, the power I get out of these Axis pedals is nuts. Um, I have the micro tune spring on here, but uh, like I said, I'm only halfway on the tension. But that's pretty much all there is to it. And once you set your pedals up, it's, I would say, 90% your settings. Uh, make sure you have the longboard direct drive pedals. Your bass drum head needs to be tight. Uh, your springs medium to medium loose. Uh, don't have your beaters too far back, but also don't have them an inch from the head either. And lower your feet footboard. And that should be pretty much it. Oh, and VDL forward. And then just work on one. Work on the second. And then put them together.